Hi everybody, welcome to NART Shield. My name is Jennifer, thank you for returning. And if this is your first time, thank you for clicking on my video and I hope you will subscribe to my channel. And I hope all of you will and hit that little button right next to it, which is a bell, so that you can get alerts to my new videos as I do download them. So I am uh, here tonight. I had done a video before where it was a longer video and they're just taking longer for me to download and it had a, all the different sources of supply in it, but I skipped one and messed up a little bit. So I decided to just do these shorter videos and I just did one on the primary source of supply. And now I am going to talk to you about the secondary source of supply that is, um, for a narcissistic person. The um, terms that I am using, I am I got them from HG Tutor. HG Tutor does have a uh, YouTube channel here, uh, right here on YouTube, and, and it's called uh, Knowing the Narcissist. And he has lots of, he also has a blog page at narcsite.com. He also has a Facebook page, I believe it's Knowing the Narcissist. And he, these are the terms that he uses. So I wanted to use these terms and I will put the his links in, um, I'll put his YouTube link in the um, comments or in the description um, below. So, okay, let's get started. So what is narcissistic supply? Narcissistic supply is what feeds the narcissist basically to um, make the narcissist feel powerful and in control of everything in their life. And they do see themselves as very special. Um, there are different types of narcissist. Uh, there is the vulnerable narcissist as well. There's different ones. We'll get into different videos with that. But right now, I'm just kind of talking general terms. They see themselves as very special. They are smarter than everybody else. They deserve um, to be admired and uh, looked up to. And they want to be... Um, the best at everything and they do see themselves as that they they if you talk to a narcissistic person they don't like people they need people and they won't tell you that they need people but they need people they don't like them uh, people to them are appliances and they need the appliances to work correctly for them if not they're going to discard the appliance and get a new appliance and it'll be a nice and shiny one that will work properly for them and give them all that narcissistic supply that they need. HG Tutor uses the word fuel, so sometimes I will use the word fuel as well. And so fuel filling up the tank, right? And so what is secondary, what is a secondary source of supply? Well, um, as I talked about the primary source, the primary source is um, someone who is around them all the time, basically like the wife or the girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, um, it can be a roommate or parent because there is non-intimate um, partners um, uh, supply and then there's the uh, intimate partner supply. And so there is different ones, but it's whoever they're around the most and they're confiding in and that kind of thing, living with on a day-to-day -day basis, talking, texting to all the time. Secondary sources of supply are people like their friends, people that you hang out with, people that you go and have a beer with, people that you work with, people that um, you talk to on a regular basis on the phone and text with on a regular basis, maybe go to a football game. Um, you know, it's maybe you do, you have hobbies with a certain person and, you know, the only time you really hang out with them is when you... Um, I don't know, go to get your nails done or go for a run or a walk. Uh, but your secondary, your secondary sources of supply and secondary sources of supply are very important to a narcissist. Uh, they absolutely need to have these secondary sources because, and, and they will kind of move around um, the, sec the sources of supply uh, because they get bored easily, so, you know, they they need to have things kind of changing up all the time. And so, you'll come in and come out and come in and come out and come in and come out. And so, um, sometimes they don't even like to have some of the supplies come together in this, at the same time because they're so different. 
Um, so um, you may not even meet some of the friends of the um, narcissist sometimes, unless maybe you're at a party or something. But um, anyway, that gets too confusing. But if you are someone like that, you're the friend, you're the friend, the uh, acquaintance that you see every now and again at a party, I would actually consider that more of a tertiary source. And we'll talk about that in the next video. But if you're a secondary source of supply, you are someone who is basically a friend. Uh, that hangs out and you can be also used to triangulate people with you um well narcissists use everybody and so you if you are in you have something that the narcissist wants it could be that you are someone who hangs out with people they want to hang out with it could be that you um let's just maybe you have uh tickets to the best ball games all the time and if this narcissist charms you well enough you will offer these tickets up all the time and want to hang out and you'll pay for it and pay for the drinks and everything else too and just have the narcissist and hang out um it could be that you have something like um a boat or a house or something you're gonna have something that the, you're gonna have to have something that is valuable to the narcissist or they don't really want to hang out with you so um it could be that uh, you work somewhere and they need you to gain something and so because you work in that industry it's like oh okay well i know that i can charm this person and they'll make sure that this happens even though we might have to jump through some hoops or something it could be that you're the doctor that doesn't make the person wait for an appointment and you'll just take them in. You don't, you know what? You don't even have to come in. I'll just put, call you in a prescription because a narcissist, they want to be treated as special. They think they deserve it. They feel entitled to it and they will cross all kinds of boundaries. And if you say no, they're still going to try. Um, they might be annoyed if you won't let them cross the boundary, but they're definitely going to try and um yeah so they need this all of the time and secondary sources are going to be treated better because you aren't somebody who is around 24 7 and they can hold up the facade pretty well you may see some things that you're like Oof, you know like oh i can't believe they said that or did that but you will be narcissists know people really well they've been watching people and mirroring and mimicking people their entire lives they know how to manipulate and they know how to see vulnerabilities within people and they know that you want something from them as well so let's just say whatever it is that they have that you might like they know that and so they don't mind you hanging on to the, the coattails. It actually makes them feel really good and powerful. And they like to puppet things or puppet you around. And it just makes them feel really good that, that you um, need them, basically. That's how they feel. And so um, you will be treated well. You may sometimes get a corrective devaluation and see, see them kind of give you some hardness, but they'll do it just to get you back in line again. And they know it'll make you feel uncomfortable and make you scramble a little bit to uh, get back in favor with them. And if you've been around a narcissist long enough, you've seen them kick people to the curb and you've seen when they've been upset with people and how they go about smearing them or whatever it is that they do. You've seen it, it's made you a little uncomfortable you may have even helped engage in that because you didn't want it to happen to you for whatever reason. So when we're hanging out with people like that, we do have to kind of look at ourselves a little bit and go, what, what is it that I need from that person? I know that I've had, um, I've, I've been that person before and, um, on my journey, I had to kind of really take a look at my surroundings and who I was hanging out with and why and um, if how they were treating me and um, if, if it was good for me or not, healthy for me or not. And I had to make a lot of changes in my life. And some of them were very, very difficult. And so I'm just letting you know what a secondary source of supply is. A narcissist needs all types of supply. And also, 
if you are the intimate partner, primary source, do know that if you are with a narcissist, they do have people that want to take your space and they are talking to people and it's usually more than one. Um, it could just be one. Most of the time it's more than that. And it could be that they're talking to them online. It could be that they're just texting them. It could be that they actually see them. But these people are people that they are seeing if they would be a good source of supply to be the primary um, candidate to take your spot. And usually they don't discard you until they already know for sure that this person is going to be a good primary source of supply to replace you. Now, you can have, uh, it can be that it's not someone, they would prefer to have it to be an intimate partner, um, but it can be somebody that's not. So it could just be someone, you know, emergency wise, like, you know, it could be a family member. So let's just say they go through a breakup and there was nobody that was willing to like come around right now and they're low on supply like that then, um, or it was all at a distance and on online and they just didn't have it like close proximity to bring them in and move them in or whatever. Then um, the the secondary sources of flight, like the friends are really gonna come into play. Like you're gonna want, they're gonna want to be around you all the time. And you'll, you'll know um, because it's like sucking the life out of you. You feel like you have, you can't, do live your own life. It's like you feel like you're always there for the needs of the narcissist. So um, anyway, it's very confusing, but know that if you're secondary sources, you'll be treated pretty well. But let me tell you something, they're treating that primary source like dirt. And if they're talking bad about people to you that you even hang out with, It'll be people that you hang out with and they're dogging them out behind their back, but all really nice to their face, that kind of thing. Um, and never have joking about them, those snide jokes that are supposed to be super funny, but they're not really funny. It's not really funny if you're teasing people. Yeah, you know, people might laugh and that kind, but if you're if you're teasing people and putting people down, it's funny how people will look at that. I have found, I want to talk about this for a minute. I find this amazing because I've seen this. Now, granted, we, we, we might laugh at things online and sometimes it's not really funny. And sometimes I even catch myself. I've done this. I've been this person who's, who's laughed at stuff. But if you are someone who, if it's your job and you're a comedian, I guess, you know, that's, what comedians do and people just need to know that that's what comedians do and we pay them to make us laugh and a lot of times they do tease other people but let's just say it's a narcissistic person they are um they love that they love that they can actually talk bad about people in a joking manner and say what they really think about somebody, but do the ha 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 behind it and have everybody else laughing at that person too. And they think it's fantastic. It's such a dose of um, supply because they're able to devalue someone and get laughs out of it in the same place and, and everybody admiring how funny they are kind of thing. And if you stop and think about it, if people are like really dogging people out and teasing them and calling them out on vulnerabilities and things like that, it's not really funny. That's not really funny. Although we do fall into that trap and laugh sometimes. And then, so let's just say it's the person that got teased and they don't think it's funny. And it's like, why would you do that to me? Like, that was so embarrassing. I didn't, why'd you call me out like that? You know, I'm shy or I'm an introvert and that was vulnerable for me. And you just, I don't like you know, attention to be put on me and then I, psh, are, get up, seriously, stop being so sensitive. And other people might do it too. Oh, you know, he was just joking. He didn't mean anything or she didn't mean anything by that. Don't be so upset about it. Um, yeah, no, if it's hurt your feelings, you're entitled to your feelings. And people will gaslight you all the time and try to make it seem like you're not entitled to your feelings. And then you'll sit there and go, am I that sensitive? Like, I didn't think it was funny. Like, I wouldn't do that to somebody or 
And if I did, I would feel bad about it. I would say, I'm sorry. I didn't even get on my sorry. So is this person going to do it to me again? It's not okay. That's not okay. And people are entitled to their feelings. People get gaslit all the time by people that are well-meaning to people. So it might be a well-meaning person who's just trying to, oh, don't worry, you're just, you're just seeing something that's not there. You just gaslit somebody. That's a narcissistic trait. Doesn't mean you're a narcissist, but that's gaslighting. And so you will hear these terms um, on my channel. You'll hear it on everybody else's channel that talks about narcissistic abuse. If you Google narcissistic abuse, you'll see gaslighting, triangulation, flying monkeys. You're going to see all the terms that um, I talk about on this channel. And uh, gaslighting is something that is always used in a narcissistic relationship. It happens all the time. We all have narcissistic traits and we all do things. But a narcissist banks on that gaslighting. And if you're somebody who is helping the narcissist along with that, and let's just say they're standing there, or they overhear you taking up and go, it was just a joke, you're being so sensitive. You're being a flying monkey. You just defended the mask of the narcissist instead of, you know, I'm sorry that your feelings got hurt by that. Um, and you know, I, truthfully, well, let's just, you don't, you don't want to lie, but you know, that might've made me feel uncomfortable too. I mean, people are entitled to their feelings and you know what, if you say, don't do that to me again, that's a boundary and those people should respect that. And if they don't, they're crossing boundaries. And so we're all learning how to, at least in my world, learning how to create boundaries. That's me. And that would be narcissistic people too but to create boundaries, but we need to respect each other the same. And unfortunately, when you're in a narcissistic relationship, it is not a balanced relationship. Uh, the narcissist expects that they are entitled to do whatever they want and that you are supposed to follow in, in line and not screw up. And if you do, you're booted and the new appliance comes in. And so uh, supply is... Uh, it, supply can even be, um, well, people, a computer, it can be all kinds of things that are giving this narcissist, um, well, really people, it really needs to be pe people are like the ones that really give the narcissist life. And, um, they, and even if you are lying to the narcissist and telling them that they're the greatest and the most good, best looking thing that you've ever seen in your life, whatever it is, the lie, even if you're lying just to, you know, not, you know, get on the bad side of the narcissist, they'll believe you. They will believe you. They'll be the first to tell you that they can't be manipulated, but they can because they want to believe that lie. <laughs> so even if you're lying, yes, they do believe you, but that's manipulative too. So, so anyway, uh, the, uh, they need different types of, uh, sources of supply. It can be good or bad as long as they're not being ignored. A narcissist does not like to be ignored. They do not want to be, um, uh, alone. They do not, they need, even though they hate people, like I said, they need people and they probably hate that they need, that's the thing. It's like they, they hate people because they hate, they need them because that makes them see something in them that they don't like, which is that they need somebody. That's like a vulnerability. And a narcissistic person does not want to have any of those vulnerabilities. They um, may feign that they have those vulnerabilities, but you can see. And when um, a narcissist is telling, saying something, the affect, no affect, sometimes like they'll be talking about, it's like they have no empathy. You can't, they don't. <laughs> You can tell if somebody has empathy or not if you really pay attention. You can tell. And even if they're a giver, they can give. But if they're, you can be a giver if you're a narcissist and just do it because you know it looks good. You, you're doing it because there's that need to hold the facade up and look like a good person. And so when you're doing that, people pay attention to all the fluff but they don't pay attention to the heart that's coming behind it. And so um, 
narcissistic people, they want people to work for, they need minions, lots of minions to do all the work for them. And they will take credit for everything. And secondary sources are great for that. And they need people to do all the work and they will bark it all out at you and you will go and do it and scramble and you'll want to be their number one man because they know the right things to say to you. Hey, you know, um, oh, my video is going too long. Um, I know you want that uh, job promotion or um, we'll look at getting you a raise, uh, that type of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. That's basically what secondary sources are. And uh, we have all been one if we have been in the realms of hanging out with that narcissist. Until next time, thanks for joining. I'll see ya.